Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Today we're going to discuss the Ford rear-wheel drive 6B family of transmissions. Um, when Ford decided that they needed a six-speed uh, automatic, they partnered with ZF in Germany. Uh, ZF had already released their 6HP family of transmissions, and it was a, a, a good design, and so Ford decided to adopt that. Uh, Ford actually uh, utilized some of the ZF transmissions, like the 6HP26, for a short period of time. Uh, Ford uh, released their 6R family in 2006. They released the 6R60 first. Uh, a couple of years later, they come out with the 6R75, uh, a little bit beefier. And in 2009, they came out with the 6R80. Uh, an easy way to tell uh, the difference between a 6R60, 6R80 externally is look at the stator support and input shaft. If there's a front bushing, it's a 6R60. If there's no bushing, it's a 6R80. So they basically use the 6R80 family for the um, heavier duty applications, but that they needed another transmission um, to handle the bigger engines, bigger loads. And of course they came out with the 6R140 uh, which is a homegrown design, not uh, like the 6HP. Uh, in 2010-2011, Ford actually started to deviate from the original design in that they no longer used a Tecum design uh, like ZF did. They actually, on certain models, they actually moved the TCM outside of the transmission, you know, like other Ford uh, uh, applications. Also, they added a one-way clutch, uh, which was not in there previously. So, for a period of time, they ran with the uh, 6R80 and 6R140. But then, they needed a mid-range, and that's the subject of this presentation, which is a 6R100. The 6R100 came out in 2017, uh, goes into like F-250s, F-350s, and uh, overall is comparable to the uh, 6R80, but there are differences. Uh, even the case, um, all of the 6R transmissions previously had a screw-in plug, which was where you put in and check the fluid. The 6R100 actually has a smooth hole to accept the filler tube. Internally, there could be some part uh, numbers that are different from the 6R80 part numbers. However, the parts uh, might interchange. Pump might look a little different. Valve body might lo look a little different. However, a lot of the items will interchange even though there might be a, uh, a number difference. The main things I want to bring your attention to, uh, what justify going up capacity from a 6R80 to a 100. A lot of it has to do with just iron. For instance, this is the intermediate shaft. This is what goes into the E-clutch. And they increase the bushing diameter 20 thousandths, which of course affected the bushing diameter of the A-clutch hub. So the bore in the, in the A-clutch hub is larger as is the bushings. On top of that, they increased the journal diameter on the outside of the A-clutch hub about 40 thousandths, which impacts the B-clutch drum. So even though internally the B-clutch drum is like a 6R80, the bushing, the bore on either side is larger. So these three pieces have to go in set. Uh, again, it's a torque capacity thing. Adding that little bit is enough to uh, 
justify the added, uh, the added designation. Another thing that they did, as I mentioned, they added a one-way clutch to the 6R80, and of course it's a mechanical diode ratchet clutch, and this was the design that was used uh, in the earlier uh, models. When they came out with the 6R100, they actually changed design. It's still a ratchet clutch, but unlike the 6R80, there's no snap ring that holds it together. This outer cam can come off easily, and you can then see the slippers that make up the diode. And the height of the uh, outer cam was also in cre uh, uh, changed from the original design with the snap ring. So whether they end up using this on 6R80 remains to be seen, but it's new for the 6R100. On the planetary side, you always had a regular um, Raveno or compound planetary. The reverse sun gear happens to be the same. The difference is in the forward or the rear sun gear and the planetary bearing. On the 6R60, 6R80, there was always a little step on the sun gear and it had a removable bearing down inside of the planetary, comparable to the front. On the 6R100, they changed that. Again, it's the same reverse sun gear. But what they did was to remove that step and they actually increased the diameter of the thrust bearing. So now on the 6R100, this is a captured bearing. You can't get it out without removing the gears. So basically it's a wider surface, wider surface on the sun gear, which again uh, increases capacity somewhat. Also, uh, for, from a capacity standpoint, is the output shaft. There was really nothing changed on the output shaft itself. What was changed is the park gear. Uh, they've always had a 20 tooth park gear on 6R60, 6R80 family, but on the 6R100, they basically have widened the teeth. So instead of it being a 20 tooth, it's a 15 tooth. So with the wider tooth, there's like, less likelihood of the tooth breaking off. And again, when you get a, a 250, 350, it's loaded to the hilt, big trailer behind it. They apparently wanted that extra uh, capacity so that it would not uh, damage the park gear. Rebuilding the 6R100 is going to be the same. You'll actually, be, as a, a 6R80, you'll actually be able to use a later model 6R80 rebuilding kit to do this. But as I mentioned, there's going to be a few things such as the uh, bushings, if you have to replace bushings, and, um, and the other parts that I mentioned. So if you get it in, just be aware of the, uh, especially if you get a 250, uh, depending on engine, it could be a 6R140, it could be a 6R100, uh, other applications, there could be a 6R80. You got to be aware of what you're working on um, so that you don't end up ordering the wrong parts. So other than that, it should not be a problem. Again, check with Transtar for product availability and part numbers. I'm Mike Riley. Thanks for watching. See you next time.